the free-to-play video game. Massively popular, easily playable, and endlessly enjoyable. There seem to be a lot of these popping up lately, and for good reason. There's no upfront cost, you don't have to worry about how it'll run on your device, or if you'll have to waste your hard-earned money on it. How's it going everyone, Bows Phoenix here, and today I have a question for us to explore. Will all games of the future be free-to-play? First, let's make sure we understand what a free-to-play game is by definition. A free-to-play game is categorized as being a video game that gives players access to a significant portion of their content without paying. Users are granted access to a fully functional game, but must pay microtransactions to access additional content. Free-to-play is contrasted with pay-to-play, which is essentially your more traditional games like Bioshock or Dark Souls, where you pay a flat upfront charge and get the full experience. Historically, free-to-play games have been around for almost two decades, starting in the mid-1990s and progressing until today. While some of these titles like RuneScape, MapleStory, and Neopets are rather primitive in design, they're considered more or less the forerunners of the free-to-play model as they were massively successful and appealed to a wide audience of casual gamers. Since then, the free-to-play market has evolved massively, and from it we've seen largely successful titles like League of Legends, Dota, Hearthstone, and Clash of Clans, to name a few. You personally may not enjoy these games, but you can't deny their popularity and success. So what does free-to-play mean for developers? Well, we live in the age of the internet where people want everything for free and they want it now. Free-to-play games feed that desire and get you hooked with their low barrier to entry, addicting mechanics, and seemingly innocent cash shops where you can upgrade your in-game experience for real-world money. So in short, you can get into a game, decide if you like it, and go from there if you want to support it. Additionally, free-to-play games have massively cut down on piracy, which obviously is a huge problem for anyone that sells something digitally, which pretty much all games are nowadays. But is free-to-play lucrative? The short answer is yes, very lucrative by some standards. For example, in 2011, free-to-play games overtook revenue from premium games in the top 100 games in Apple's App Store. More impressively, the mobile free-to-play game Clash of Clans was able to pay Liam Neeson to star in its own Super Bowl ad, which cost them around a cool $4.5 million. But where does this money come from, you might be asking? I don't spend money on free-to-play games, my friends don't spend money on free-to-play games, and you're right. Most people don't spend money on free-to-play games, but some do, and they spend a lot of money. The gaming industry refers to these people as whales. Whales often account for about 1.5% of a given game's player base as a group of gamers who make up most of the game's revenue. As such, about 50% of a game's revenue comes from about 10% of its players. You've all seen that one guy in game, right? The dude with all the exclusive skins, weapons, and more in-game currency than his bank account has money? Yeah, well that's a whale, and they're keeping your favorite free-to-play game alive, so the next time you see someone like that, make sure to give him a quick pat on the back. So back to our original question, is free-to-play the way of the future? Well, judging by the recent success of games like League of Legends, Team Fortress 2, and Hearthstone, as well as many other smaller titles, I'd have to say yes. It makes sense for developers, and according to the data, it would seem that the vast majority of players prefer spending their time and money on free-to-play games. Additionally, a lot of the bigwigs in the industry have their outlook as well. For example, Charles Onyet, editor for IGN, is quoted as saying, expensive, one-time purchases are facing extinction. He believes that the current method of paying a one-time fee for most games will eventually disappear completely. And, of course, everyone's favorite gaming industry punching bag, EA, has gone on record as saying that it is inevitable that microtransactions will be a part of every game eventually. And finally, given the evidence presented, what does this mean for us as players? How will traditional story-driven games like Doom work out as free to play? Will we get half the game and pay a dollar per bullet we fire? It's interesting, and a little scary to think about, but as long as people keep voting with their wallets for free content, who knows where the gaming industry will end up? Is it even a bad thing? Let me know your thoughts in the comments. But that's gonna do it for me today, folks, as we take a speculative look at the future of the gaming industry. Don't forget to leave a like on this video if you enjoyed it, and consider subscribing for more gaming content if you're new here. Until next time, though, I'm Bows Phoenix. I'll see you at the next video, and as always, Thank you so much for watching.